did you know? Sekiro Shadows Die Twice began when director Hidetaka Miyazaki wanted to change gears from his previous western inspired work such as Dark Souls and Bloodborne and create a game that was distinctly set in Japan. He was particularly interested in the Sengoku period, also known as the Warring States period. This time period was an intense era in Japan's history, marked with political and social turmoil, as well as bloody civil wars. Meanwhile, Activision were hoping to expand their productions beyond their typical shoot affair, and showed interest in working with From Software. Around this time, Miyazaki's team had been looking into making another title in the classic ninja stealth action series Tenchu. This worked in both of the company's favours, as Activision had experience in publishing the first few Tenchu titles before handing off the series to From Software in 2004. From Software took over publishing duties in Japan from that point onwards and even developed for the Tenchu series themselves. The two companies began working together with the expectations of creating a new Tenchu game. However, while the title started off as a Tenchu sequel, things began to change as the project continued to grow and evolve. From Software's marketing and communications manager Yasuhiro Kitao recalled, but as we developed and started building the game together with Activision, it started becoming its own thing and the game we wanted to make was no longer just Tenchu. Worried that the project was becoming constrained by the Tenchu moniker, both From Software and Activision agreed to let the game spread its wings as an entirely new and original IP. This new IP would ultimately become Sekiro. The name Sekiro is derived from two separate words. Seki stems from Sekiwan, an old Japanese term for a person missing an arm, while Ro comes from the kanji character for wolf. Together they can be translated as one-armed wolf, which was intentionally chosen to describe the main character. At first the game was simply going to be called Sekiro. The Shadows Die Twice tagline was originally nothing more than a striking catchphrase Hidetaka Miyazaki came up with for the game's trailers. However, Activision loved the line so much that they pushed to have it included in the title. Although From Software holds the publishing rights for Sekiro Shadows Die Twice in Japan, Activision has remained closely involved with the game's development. In fact, From Software sends Activision weekly builds of the game to test for quality assurance, player feedback, and other bits of valuable information. In spite of this, Activision does not want to ruin the unique style and sense of mystery that makes From Software's game special, and avoided over-policing the studio with a hands-off approach. The team is allowed to do whatever they wish, receiving Activision's feedback with no strings attached. Miyazaki told Eurogamer, Activision holds our creative vision in the highest regard. From Software has editorial and directive control over the game and the game's content. After you press the start button, it's all up to the From team. Unlike From Software's Soulsborne games, Sekiro Shadows Die Twice was entirely designed around a single class, the ninja. Ninjas were chosen over samurai as the team felt that samurai were too restrictive. Miyazaki said, We feel that samurai are a lot more grounded. They hold their weapon in two hands, they fight on the ground, there's just one way, that's their aesthetic. The shinobi aesthetic is to use everything in their arsenal, use a multitude of tools, use their mobility. This influenced the team to create multiple ways for players to overcome the game's challenges. The main character's prosthetic arm was made to further complement the design philosophy, allowing players to gain more abilities as they progress through the game. For instance, the grappling hook was particularly created to grant players more freedom in exploring the map and handling enemy encounters. This had a number of repercussions on the game's design, and pushed the team to create more vertically complex levels, as well as develop more dynamic boss battles against foes that traverse the entire battlefield, and the inclusion of a dedicated jump button. Miyazaki explained, This way of building the game gives us greater freedom, and it gives the player greater freedom to decide how they want to tackle this or to encourage them to try and find something else and to keep adding to their arsenal and use every little bit of it to defeat these challenges. The game's core combat was completely reworked to better fit the ninja theme as well. The deflect system was specifically crafted to thrust players into dramatic duels, clashing blades together with their opponents in thrilling battles of swordplay. To complement this, the death blow system, inspired by the Tenchu series ninsatsu techniques, was added to create a satisfying reward for outpacing enemies. However, this focus on high 
highly technical swordsmanship created vastly more work for the developers, especially when it came to balancing battles. Lead designer Masaru Yamamura told Game Informer, The combat system is very precise, and in order to teach players this, we need enemy animations and attack animations to be very precise. We need players to see what's coming and to learn these movements and then react accordingly. And so when it comes down to tweaking these attacks, we can't just do it on a parameter level. We have to actually tweak frame by frame the animations and remove frames or add frames here and there to make sure that it looks pitch perfect and that the user is going to be able to react to that intuitively. Another departure from the Soulsborne series is the lack of any sort of multiplayer. From Software saw this as a positive change rather than a negative one though, as it meant that they were no longer restricted by having to create balanced multiplayer mechanics while designing the game. Furthermore, it also allowed the team to focus on fine-tuning each aspect of the game to create the best single-player experience possible. Other aspects, such as the ability to read messages from other players, were also cut, as Miyazaki didn't want the studio to keep doing the same thing over and over again. Instead, players are rewarded for acting like a ninja, scouting out the game's world for information on their own. For example, players can collect intel through speaking with NPCs or by eavesdropping on enemies. At one point in development, Activision suggested including more tutorials in the game. While From Software discarded this advice at first, they began to reconsider it as the game diverged more and more from the studio's prior work. Eventually, the team came to realise that tutorials don't exclusively have to teach players how to play the game, but could also be used to convey what kind of game Sekiro is. After all, many of From Software's fans would become frustrated if they tried to play Sekiro like they would play Dark Souls or Bloodborne. Nevertheless, the developers have been careful not to overdo it either. Yamamura stated, So we understand that we have players who enjoy From Software games. Not teaching the player anything and not guiding them at all and letting them get lost in the world and learn all the systems for themselves. And we don't want to disappoint those users as well. We feel like we've come to a nice middle ground and found a compromise where we can teach the appeal of the game and teach them new mechanics without being too overbearing and without disappointing those fans. Did you also know that Capcom considered using traditional tank controls and fixed camera angles for the 2019 remake of Resident Evil 2? Or that the 2019 remake has many unused elements from an early scrapped version of the original RE2 on the PlayStation? For more facts, check out the Did You Know Gaming video on Resident Evil 2.